Hey, it's Bill Russell. I'm here in my yellow hat. I wore it at Vive and Hims to signify our partnership with Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation and the search for cures and to combat childhood cancer. I'm just blown away by the generosity of our community. With the help of our partners, SureTest, Rackspace, CTG, and some of you giving individually, we were able to raise close to $40,000 at those two events. It is just exceptional. And I would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this cause. If you would like to be a part of it as well, go ahead and hit our page, thisweekhealth.com. You can go to the top blue banner that is on our homepage and click on that to give today. Thank you again for being a part of this effort and this cause. Today in Health IT, we take a look at the AI speed bumps. Are there any? What's slowing us down? What will slow us down? That's what we're gonna take a look at. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels and events dedicated to transform healthcare, one connection at a time. We wanna thank our show sponsors who are investing in developing the next generation of health leaders, SureTest, Artisite, Parlance, Certify Health, Notable, and ServiceNow. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. Three quick things for you. Don't forget, hit thisweekhealth.com slash news, curated news just for you. Number two, we are continuing our partnership with Alex's Lemonade Stand, and we have a goal to raise an additional $100,000 this year. Love to have you be a part of it. Hit our website, top right-hand column, click on that to give today. And finally, share this podcast with a friend or colleague. Use it as a foundation for daily or weekly discussions on topics that are relevant to you and the industry. You can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. All right. Story, MSNBC, companies want to move fast with AI adoption, but see plenty of speed bumps. And they have their key points at the top, and then they go into this the article. Let me get my glasses on. These are pretty small. Let's see. Barriers to generative AI adoption abound, keeping companies from moving as fast as they'd like. Among them, cybersecurity threats, talent shortages, and regulatory delays. Staying current with AI developments is an ongoing process, not a one-and-done event. Those are their key points. Let's go down to the article. Obviously, everybody's looking to take advantage of the latest artificial intelligence tools. And that is the gist of the story. A survey of 120 U.S. senior AI machine learning decision makers conducted in late 2023 by research and media firm Foundry and technology consulting firm Searce, S-E-A-R-C-E, showed that less than 40% of organizations have successfully deployed an AI project. Less than 40% of organizations. I wonder, wow, I'd love to do that survey right now. I'm going to put that into my 229 project questions. How many of you have successfully deployed an AI project? So if you're planning to come to one of our 229 projects meetings, be ready for that question. That's uh, 40, only 40%. It's early 2024. Yeah, there, let's take a look at the reasons. Among the biggest barriers to adoption, the rise in cybersecurity threats, the Foundry Sears study showed that 58% of respondents said data security is a leading barrier to AI adoption. Wow. I'm not sure that's the biggest barrier. I'd, I'd be more concerned about the lawsuits, quite frankly, about the data. I'd be more concerned about the rework if I implement something and one of those lawsuits happens to take hold and screws up some of the models that have been created. That would be my concern. Cybersecurity... I guess it depends on what type of project or how you're thinking about using it. Uh, there's an awful lot of protections against that. Anyway, let's see. There's lack of understanding about the security vulnerabilities of AI applications, said Jake Williamson, a faculty member of, uh, at cybersecurity research firm Ian's Research. AI apps, especially those with using large language models, bring in an entirely new set of vulnerabilities that are poorly understood by most applica application developers and security testers, William said, until there's a better understanding of these issues and better tools to help with auditing and defense, some CISOs are warning that additional risks might not be warranted. Okay, I'm not hearing that as much, but uh, I will, I'll definitely look into that. Uh, the most productive step companies can take is to get educated about how AI works. Yes, of course, I'll move on because this is stuff we all know. AI return on investment. Another barrier is unclear use cases for AI. I think this is a bigger one, actually. Many businesses are not thinking about which organizational use cases will bring them the biggest return on investment. And I think we, in, in healthcare, you'll hear this vernacular of, we need to start with the problem. 
I will take it one step further and, and say, we need to start with the problems we need to solve, like the biggest problems, the problems that will give us the biggest return. Maybe not the biggest problems, but the problems that will give us the biggest returns. And we, we used to always do this with our projects. This was part of our governance process. It was part of our prioritization process. We had to do an ROI model on every project. Now, as, <laughs> I was cynical on some of these ROI models because we had people all over the organization doing these ROI models. And the ones we did within IT were very detailed. And we had, we had uh, in fairness, we had uh, a couple of finance people on our staff who were putting these things together. And so they were and they were MBA students from Ivy Lake schools. They were really good at putting these models together. And then I would see some of these others. And it looks like in comparison, it would be like crayons and typewritten pages. It was so anyway, regardless, we need to be looking at the on the return on these projects and and then evaluating the return as we move forward. Because keep in mind, this is the start of these AI projects, not for health. We've been doing AI projects for a while, but what I will say is this is the start of an age where we're going to see AI permeate every aspect of healthcare. And so we need to get good at these types of projects where we have a, a thesis, we have a, a projected return, we do a test of that thesis, we then uh, evaluate that thesis, we then scale that thesis, and then we evaluate once again. And you want to get into that that mode, that mechanism, so that you can start to churn those through in a lot tighter circles. You're doing more and more projects at the same time with verifiable and, and solid results. That's going to be the way you're going to want to move forward with these things. And so, yes, we need to identify the highest returning. Finding the right balance of both complexity and impact is critical on how AI will be adopted across the organization. And you no know, complexity and impact, that four quadrant thing is always, always a valuable thing to do and put all your projects on that complexity, easy to incredibly difficult, and then return from low to high. And then you want to stay in as many easy and high return projects as you can until you've cleared all those out. And then you start working towards the more difficult but high return projects. Again, that's a great graph to, to work from. Many organizations want to use AI in applications, but don't know where they can get value from it. William said, today we're seeing a bit of a gold rush feeling and don't get left behind without any real thought as to the applicability to a specific use case, he said. This reminds me a lot of the early blockchain days. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. I wouldn't equate this to blockchain. However, I could see, I see what he's saying. And actually, I would not be worried the, the don't be left behind thing is not something we should be uh, worried about. I would be worried about competitors getting a distinct advantage over us. And so I would be looking at, I would be scouring articles and looking for ways that people are utilizing the technology that I would identify as potential game changers into how we interact with our consumers, how we deliver on our results, be those clinical results, be those financial results those operational results, whatever it happens to be. Let's see. Finally, AI adoption might be slowed by regulatory policies and compliance efforts with AI adoption being in its early days. Regular regulators are still evaluating its implications. Most government and regulatory bodies are still in the early days of formulating the guardrails that will define how AI is more broadly adopted across companies. We're not going to be writing AI models. So I, I, it's we are going to have to adopt the right partner who is going to be able to handle these guardrails and handle the regulatory environment for us. I know of very few organizations that are even playing around with the open source models. I'd like to see more of us playing around with the open source models, but only with regard to a promise of some kind of return on the other side. I wish there was more money in the startup space at this point because I think there's a lot of opportunity. And that's what we're going to miss, by the way, in the startup space where the, the money has receded, the tide has gone out, as it were, not as much risk being taken by investors and whatnot. So we're going to miss a lot of those startups who were given a couple million dollars. They were able to get a bunch of programmers together and do some proof of concepts, essentially, is what that was for us. And it was really nice environment that we had there, had going there for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, I think that will return. But right now, 
it is all about your ability to to cash flow as an organization. And so a lot of those risks have gone away. Again, on the regulatory side, the one last thing I will say is these lawsuits do have me concerned a little bit in terms of how much of the data are they going to have to strip out of these models that they train them with. And specifically, the chat GPT model I'm most uh, concerned about. Where did it get its training from? There's a lot of a lot of studies that have gone on. Hey, we've been able to identify where it's got its training from, and they don't really have access to that data. I don't know how that's going to impact it. I'm not sure that would slow me down, but it would slow me down from doing uh, significant implementations that are going to be ingrained into our processes until I understood that a little bit more. And hey, you know what? The lawsuits and whatnot, they're having their impact that they desire to have, which is they're slowing people down. People like myself are looking at it going, do we really want to go into full scale deployment of that when we could potentially have a bunch of rework? So anyway, companies want to move fast with AI adoption, but see plenty of speed bumps. And I understand where they're coming from and I understand their concerns. I still think we need to move. We need to be doing a lot of pilots, a lot of tests. I'm seeing them done. I'm seeing people report out on them. They are learning a ton. They're learning on adoption. They're learning on what aspects these large language models are good at, what aspects they're not good at, how to integrate them into the workflow, how to integrate them with other machine learning models that we've had for years how to create transparency in those models. We're learning a ton. And that in and of itself is worth a lot because at some point you are going to have to move fast and having that learning behind you is going to be well worth it. All right, that's all for today. Don't forget, share this podcast with a friend or colleague. Keep the conversation going. We want to thank our sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. SureTest, Artisite, Parlance, Certify Health, Notable, and ServiceNow. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.